Well, greetings this morning, Body of Christ. Welcome once again to an encounter with Jesus as we move along. We almost finished uh, this series of encountering Jesus. Firstly, I want to encourage you to open up your own Bibles and follow along as we go through the scriptures. Now you can, of course, if you're watching this video, you can, of course, push the pause button Find yourself the scripture in your own Bible and then push the pause button, button push the pause button once again and continue on with the teaching. <clears throat> I also want to encourage you, as I have mentioned over the past couple of weeks, just to let me know if this is helping you at all in your further study of the scriptures. You can do that, of course, by dropping us a line at andycap09 at vaccine.com. And that's andycap with a capital A. So andycap09 at vaccine.com. And I want to really encourage you to complete the video because there's so much pertinent and powerful information throughout the whole video. There are some of you who are giving up at five minutes or six minutes into the video, and that's unfortunate because there's so much more for you to glean from this study. So I would encourage you to spend that half hour or 36 minutes, however long the video is, and glean all that you can from it, okay? So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you, we thank you, and praise you, Father God, for this day. We thank you and praise you, Father God, for your word in this day, your Holy Spirit in this day. Father God, as you teach and lead us and guide us into all the hidden mysteries of who we are, whose we are, and what we are in you, we give you praise and thanks for it, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's start today with a question. I've got a couple of questions for you before we really get into this into the teaching today and the first one is just how many times do we forget to have a confident expectation in the Lord while all the time having the word within us and I'm not just talking about the word we have memorized within us no I'm talking about the Lord himself now we oft times become so overwhelmed with the cares of this life that we forget to cry out to him well, all the time, the Lord just wants us in times of distress to cry out, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. This is what is meant by being of good cheer, to bless the Lord. Now, the Apostle Peter puts it this way in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 5-8, through 8, if you would. <clears throat> Through our faith, through our faith, the mighty power of God constantly guards us until our full salvation is ready to be revealed in the last time. May the thought of this, listen to this, may the thought of this cause you to jump for joy, even though lately you had to put up with the grief of many trials, but only but these only reveal the sterling core of your faith, which is far more valuable than gold that perishes, for even gold is refined by fire. Your authentic faith, isn't that a beautiful phrase? Your authentic faith will result in even more praise, glory, and honor when Jesus, the Anointed One, is revealed. You love Him passionately, although you have not seen Him. But through believing in him, you are saturated with a static joy, indescribable, sublime, and immersed in glory. Hallelujah, body of Christ. Being full of joy unexpressible and full of glory is being full of the revelation of the opinion of God. Receiving the end of our faith which is the salvation of our soul. So, receiving the outcome of 
of our persuasion, the salvation of our soul, is the Father's peace within. Did you see that? Did you hear that? Did you get that? This is the peace within that allows our outer man to position himself to develop. So believing, we rejoice, as we have just read through 1 Peter 1.8. So let me ask you another pertinent question today. If we're going to rejoice, as we should, what then will it take for us to rejoice? And by that I mean, what will it take within us to rejoice? What condition must be in, or we be in, what condition must me, we be in to rejoice? Well, I think that you will agree with me that firstly there needs to be a willingness within for us to rejoice. So, what am I trying to say by this body of Christ? <clears throat> Would you not say that there has to be a willingness within us for us to want to rejoice? In order then for us to rejoice, can we say this, that our will has to be involved when it comes to rejoicing? I think that we can emphatically say, and I think that you can agree with me, that the answer is emphatically yes. Now if we pause and take stock, I think that we'll find that our will is involved in everything that we do in our daily lives. So when it comes then to the woman with the issue of blood and the Lebanese woman whose daughter was demonically possessed, that both of these women who were commended by Jesus himself and the fullness of their faith, that first and foremost, that they both had to have a very strong will to go to Jesus. If you remember, we started off a few lessons ago mentioning that some people don't necessarily want to get well because they become accustomed to their ailment and they will lose the attention that they become comfortable with with their getting well. But as we stated before, to know or not to do is really what? Not yet to know. So listen, it is going to take a learned, we have to learn this, it is going to take a learned understanding of our own will for us to see the meaning of 1 Peter 1, 5-8. Otherwise, by dear Christ, they'll just become pretty words on the page with no real personal meaning or application to us at all. But by our repeated actions, what we're saying is that we don't have the willpower. We don't have the willpower to jettison our addictions, whatever they may be. What do we do by this? What we do by this is that we decree, listen, we decree that our infirmities can't be healed because medical science hasn't come up yet with the answers. If you remember, we said that we don't need a miracle or a man. But at the same time, listen, at the same time, we all understand the application of medical science. Thank God for medical science. Because it's all about using the wisdom that Father God has placed in the earth. But the fact remains, body of Christ, that because medical science doesn't have all the answers, this doesn't cut us off from recovery, does it? Now, I'm going to switch gears here. A minute. And not meaning to be flippant, Jesus couldn't find a bridge builder, nor did he have the time to look for one, even if he could, in Matthew 14, 22 through 25, if you would go there for me. 
Matthew 14, 22 starts off with, as soon as the people were fed, Jesus told his disciples to get into the boat and go to the other side of the lake while he stayed behind to dismiss the people. So after the crowds had dispersed, Jesus went up into the hills to pray. And as night fell, he was there praying alone. But the disciples, who were in the middle of the lake, ran into trouble, for their boat was tossed about by high winds and heavy seas. At about four o'clock in the morning, Jesus came to them, walking on the waves. But in Christ Jesus is showing us once again to the fullness of his faith, the fullness of his will, and the fullness of his authority. This is the faith. This is the faith, the will and the authority. If we can see it and believe it, that Jesus has given to each and every believer. For greater things than these shall you do, because I go to be with the Father. John 14, 12. Now just look at how this verse of Scripture starts. John 14, 12. Listen to this. Verse 12 starts, I tell you a timeless truth. The person who follows me will do the same mighty miracles that I do, even greater miracles than these because I go to be with my Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn with him now, if you will. And let's go back to Matthew 15, 28. I want to bring out some truths here, okay? We're talking about the Lebanese woman and the woman uh, whose daughter is possessed by a demon. Verse 28 starts, Then Jesus answered her, Dear woman, your faith is strong. What you desire, now listen, what your will suggests will be done for you. And at that very moment, her daughter was set free from demonic torment. Now, making a determination in her heart and her will she would now seek out this famed healer. Will we then ourselves will to do the same? The Lord clearly said no one could be his disciple without giving up his own possessions. Now, does this mean that we must sell everything we own to follow him? This may be the literal as it was with the rich young ruler. For others, it may involve a radical separation from our devotion to our possessions so that they have no pull on us, whether we gain them or lose them. Now listen, separation from things must be accomplished if we are to be true disciples. For where your treasure is, there your will and your heart will be also. Matthew 6, 21. For your heart will always pursue what you esteem as your treasure. For it is by the heart that we believe. Now the Apostle Paul warned us in his letter to Timothy, in 1 Timothy Chapter 6, verses 6 through 12. I know this is a lot of scripture this morning, but it's necessary, believe me. Verse 6 starts off in 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6. We have a prophet that is greater than theirs, our holy awe of God. To have merely our necessities is to have enough. Isn't it true that our hearts, or sorry, that our hands were empty when we came into this world? And when we leave this world, our hands will be empty again? Because of this, food and clothing is enough to make us content. Because of this, food and clothing is enough to make us content. Wow. But those who crave the wealth of this world 
slip into spiritual snares. They become trapped by the troubles that come through their foolish and harmful desires, driven by greed and drowning in their own sinful pleasures, and they take others down with them into the, their corruption and eventual destruction. Loving money is the root of all evil. Some people run after it so much that they have given up their faith. Causing, sorry, craving more money pushes them away from their faith into error. Corrupting, or I should say compounding misery in their lives. Corrupting it too. Timothy, verse 11, you are God's man. So run from all these errors instead chase after true holiness justice faithfulness love hope and tender humility and verse 12 so fight with faith for the winner's prize lay your hands upon eternal life to which you were called and about which you make a good confession or you made a good confession before the multitude of witnesses so bondage then body of christ to material things involves our will does it not and reveals that we believe only in our minds and not in our hearts when we believe in our hearts eternal things become more real than temporal things the temporal can no longer keep us yoked to them we can no longer be yoked to the temporal things when our treasures really when our treasure is really in heaven our hearts will be there also. But not all cares and worries of this world are related to material possessions. Amen? Some are based on the choking bondage to that of men's approval. This is also the prevailing of the temporal over the eternal. Now Jesus stated and Jesus said in John 5 44 he said of course you're unable to believe me for you live to enjoy the praises of others and not the praises that come from the one true God seeking honor or recognition from men even spiritual men instead of maintaining the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ is a grievous enemy of true faith. Developing a secret uh, relationship with our Father in Heaven is one of the most positive things that we can do to grow in faith. The Lord Himself exhorted us to give alms and to pray in secret. If you then do things to receive recognition from men, then we have received a whole reward like that of getting that temporal feeling of satisfaction and recognition. But if we do things only before the Father, then our treasure in heaven grows. Matthew chapter 6 verses 19 through 21 reads, if you turn there with me, Don't keep hoarding up for yourselves earthly treasures, that can be stolen by thieves. Material wealth eventually rusts, decays, and loses its value. Instead, stockpile, stockpile heavenly treasures for yourself that cannot be stolen and will never rust, decay, or lose their value. Verse 21, for your heart will always pursue what you esteem as your treasure. Just think about that for a moment. Judas, even though Jesus said to him in Matthew, or Jesus said, I should say, in Matthew 26, 21, while they were eating, Jesus had spoke up and said, one of you is about to betray me. At this time, as Jesus is saying this, Judas was eating with the rest of the twelve. And in his heart, this is Judas. In his heart, his will was to betray Jesus for, as it turned out, for 30 pieces of silver. Emphasizing here, if you will, that it was Judas's will to betray Jesus. 
Then in comparison to that, we have the Lebanese woman who came to find this healer from Israel. Because it seems like this Canaanite woman, like the Roman centurion in Matthew 8, 5 through 9, it seemed that they both understood authority. Let's go to Matthew 8 and look at verses 5 through 9 first. When Jesus entered the village of Capernaum, a captain in the Roman army approached him asking for a miracle. Lord, he said, I have a son who's lying in, her, in my home, paralyzed and suffering terribly. Verse 7, Jesus responded, I will go with you and heal him. But the Roman officer interjected, Lord, who am I to have you come into my house? I understand your authority. I understand your authority. For I too am a man who walks under authority and have authority over soldiers who serve under me. I can tell one to go and he'll go, and not to come and he'll come. I command my servants and they do whatever I ask. So now that I know, I should say, I saw, I know that all you need to do is to stand here and command healing over my son and he will be instantly healed. Jesus was astonished. How many places in the Bible where can you find where Jesus was astonished? When he heard this, he said to those who were following him, He has greater faith than anyone I've encountered in Israel. Jesus was astonished. <laughs> Neither one of these, the Lebanese woman or the Roman centurion, were Jewish. And yet both of them touched the heart of Jesus with their strong will and faith. Listen again to Matthew 15, 26-27. It starts, it is not right for a man to take bread from his children and throw it out to the dogs. Now listen to the determination in this woman's voice. You're right, Lord, she replied, but even the puppies get to eat the crumbs that fall from the prince's table. Jesus replied to this Lebanese woman. What he said was, and I'm taking a liberty here with this verse, Jesus said, Be it unto you, as your will and heart have said. And having set the limit, thus establishing the conclusion and the result within the Lebanese woman's heart, she said to herself, No more. No more. And the daughter was healed. Now turn with me, if you will, to John 7:17. 7, and I ask you to listen carefully to the words of Jesus here, meditating upon them in your heart or in our hearts. Jesus said in John 7, 17, If you want to test my teachings and discover where I receive them, first be passionate to do God's will. Now listen. Be passionate to do God's will and not your own. And then you will be able to discern if my teachings are from the heart of God or from my own opinions. Now the Aramaic is very poetic here because it reads, whoever is satisfied to do God's satisfaction shall gain liberating knowledge. So what this is saying is that whoever is willing to do his will, God's will, he, the one who is willing to do his will, shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it is from God or, or, or whether I speak of my own authority. This is Jesus speaking, of course. If anyone wills to do his, God's will, they shall know from my teachings whether or not the teachings are valid. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay, here we go. So this is what Jesus is saying. In essence, if anyone wills to do God's will, Jesus said they will know. 
how then will they know? Well, simply because and through the manifestation of his will, God's will. What else did Jesus say? He said they will see the glory of God. John eleven forty reads, Jesus looked at her and said, Didn't I tell you that if you will, and there's the will again, body of Christ, if you will believe me, you will see God unveil his glory. Without seeing the manifestation of the glory of God and experiencing the view and the opinions of God. Now, notice that Jesus didn't say, if anybody wants to, no. Jesus said, if anyone wills to. So, the actual act of our will is involved. Can we see that? If anyone is determined to do God's will, with their being determined and decrees to do the Father's determination and decrees it. Now, let me just rephrase that or re say that again. If anyone is determined to do God's will, with their being determined and, de and they decree within themselves to do Father God's determination and decrees it. So what are we saying? What we're saying is this. Be determined and be cleansed. Well, you might be saying, well, that's quite a pill to swallow, body, uh, body. that's quite a pill to swallow. That is quite a pill to swallow, Pastor. But this is no more of a pill to swallow than the two women and the centurion whom we've looked at. They're all determined and they all decreed in their hearts beforehand before they came to Jesus with their need, they decreed it in their hearts, as in the case of the woman with the issue of blood. She decreed, if I can but touch his garment, Matthew 9, 21, let's go there. 21 reads in Matthew 9, for she kept saying to herself, she's decreeing this all the time, if I can only touch his garment, I shall be restored to health. Here then we can see, in closing body of Christ, that these women and the centurion's declarations plus their determination for healing became fact because they decreed it through their will in line with Father God's will. I think that we can safely say that this is food for thought. Amen. I have a question in closing. Does our own faith run deep enough so that virtue runs from Christ fulfilling our need as we have just read in these three cases here? Think about that, brother Christ. May the Lord God bless you and keep you. May the Lord God make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord God turn his face toward you and give you his peace. Think about the things that we have mentioned today. The body of Christ. Determine in your heart. And then your will, with your determination, as we have seen, will bring about healing. Amen. So until the next time, Shalom and God bless you.